Let's see how it soaks it up here at 18 miles an hour. Oh, very, very nice. All right, guys, a little special for you today. My friend Tommy's back in town for the holidays. He doesn't have his uh, C-Force 950HO with him, but he did bring his 800 XC2 up four-wheeler. So I'm gonna take it for a little ride here and give you my first impressions because I've been looking at CF Moto ever since I've been wanting to get back into four-wheeler ride. So right off the bat here, this is a nice riding four-wheeler, which I would expect because it is a two-up machine and it's big. It feels big. It looks big. And with a curb weight of over 1,000 pounds, she's a heavy girl too, weighing in at 1,056 pounds. With that being said, it has big power too! Woo! I'm barely even going it! So despite being pretty big, pretty light on its feet. Now it's not snappy like a Outlander 1000 would be. I'll say that right off the bat. Power comes on smooth, it's linear, and it doesn't really have that throw you back in the saddle kind of feel to it. And I know it's not an apples to apples comparison, but I also had to put it up against the R Max just to see how it compared. CF Moto 800 versus R Max. Go! Oh, they're doing a lot of spinning. Our max for the win. Now we're gonna try a four-wheel drive run. Dan does have the R Max in sport mode. Here we go. It's a lot closer. But again, there's a difference between a 998 or whatever Yamaha SCC engine 100 meter horsepower versus Tommy. I figured he's gonna beat you. He's got more power, heavier machine, but. Victory! Woo! <laughs> it still kept up with you pretty good though. It was like right there. But what? 108 horsepower versus what are these, Tom? Do you know off the top of your head? Maybe like 50 something. 800. We'll be right back to you with that. On the screen, right there, what Tommy's horsepower is. So these are an 850 B twin. Or an 800 B twin. These are 800. 800, I guess. I'm sorry. I'll look up the specs here and put them on the screen. But again, this is a big girl and she's a heavy girl. And I can kind of feel that driving it around. Also, right off the bat, the power steering to me is a little bit twitchy, I'm noticing. It's probably nice rock crawling and cruising but it just feels a bit on the twitchy side for just riding around again this is a big old v-twin so the center here is pretty pretty wide because you got a big old v-twin motor stuck in there so your legs are spread out apart a little bit but i will say the seat is very comfy and the handlebar position is really nice. It's a good position. At least for my 510, 173. Yeah, pulling hills, no problem. Actually kicking sideways a little bit.
I want to take it up around here go through a little tight wood section to see how this uh, the size of this guy affects its deep woods riding this so this does have four-wheel drive with front diff lock I shouldn't need it I am in four-wheel drive right now we did get into a little bit more mud two or four later on in the day hey two or four Okay. Go, go for the hard part. But CFMO did fine. He tried the hole in two-wheel drive, had to lock it in four-wheel drive. I don't think he had to use his diff lock at all. Yeah, get it all nice and slimy for a uh, win. Oh! He's stuck! Oh, darn it. So wheel spin might have been a little excessive there, but he did get out in regular four-wheel drive and didn't need to lock it in. So as you would expect, a big utility 4x4 four four like four. that, four-wheel drive works great. Two. Let's kick her into two-wheel drive and see. So the loose end, the rear end will want to get loose here. That is why the power steering felt, well, actually, I thought maybe that attributed to the twitchy power steering, but uh, I don't know. It's a little worse now. It's in two-wheel drive when you don't have the front wheels pulling and trying to keep it straight. I'm not sure I'm a big fan of the power steering on this. Let's cut through here. Let's put her in the low gear see how well the engine braking holds another thing I'm not used to is a single brake being up here okay so the engine braking is kind of like my old Articat trail it drops below a certain RPM and the clutch releases and you kind of freewheel there I've lost my trail. There it is. I just went past it. And I guess when you are used to driving side by sides and have drove pretty much exclusively side by sides for the past six, seven years, even though this is a big four wheeler, it's still going to feel super nimble in the woods no matter what. So yes, it's longer, but no, it doesn't hurt. It's in the woods before. It's turning radius, although it's bigger than the big bear, is still pretty short. I keep finding myself reaching for the brake over here and it's not there. It does have a horn now. <laughs> oh yeah, no problem. One thing I am finding a little, I have mixed feelings on, is because it's a two up and you have the rear seat back here, my back is and rear of my bomb is hitting this I'm not sure I like that I'd like to be able to scoot back if I want to so that's something to consider is this is going to be right in your back if you have the two up seat on but I do believe that's removable so that's not such a big deal you can always take that off I will say this with my experience with the Outlander 1000 I had the power of this, I mean, it doesn't compare, no, but it's from that little bit right there, a lot easier to control in the woods trails. And I like that. Now, some of you may think I'm just getting old and fuddy duddy. I don't like the big powerful machines anymore. There, you see how we reached that RPM and she free wheeled. So you probably have to do like the Articat tap the throttle to keep the belt engaged so the engine braking works but as I was saying you might think I'm an old funny daddy for not liking uh, the big powerful machines anymore but again if you guys have watched my channel for a long time you know the kind of riding I do is more deep woods small 
trails where less power and more nimbleness is more fun than a big machine with lots of power because on the smaller less powerful more nimble machines you can actually go faster than the big powerful ones very very nice it is definitely on par with my outlander 1000 i'm not sure what he has the shock set at because this does have the adjustable shocks but it's plush let's hit where did that come from let's see how it soaks it up here at 18 miles an hour oh very very nice yeah so the suspension on this 800 is very very nice we'll take it up here into the country whoops and see how it is Again, this is just kind of a first impression video. Tommy's up, we're gonna be doing a full ride here today. So I will probably give you a more, Woo! oh, that was easy to pop up the front wheels. I'll give you guys more of my thoughts as the information of this ride soaks in and I get to think about it a little bit. But I will say CF Moto has definitely come a long way. Country whoops! Okay, that's a little bucky. Still soaks it up pretty nice. And another nice thing with the longer chassis four-wheeler, this has a uh, wheelbase of 58 inches, is it handles rutted out sections a lot better than a short four-wheeler would. That longer wheelbase helps to keep the wheels planted a lot better. Definitely a lot better than my Big Bear handles this section right here. So I have not ever rode an 850 Outlander. So again, my comparison's more to my 1000 Outlander I had. And obviously a better comparison would be a, the CF Moto's 1000 Overland versus the Outlander 1000, at least as far as power wise. But yeah, this is a nice machine. I would say for something a little cheaper than a Can-Am, this would definitely be the way to go. I think my biggest complaint in this little bit, this little ride, is the twitchy power steering. Other than that, I am pretty much liking everything about it. So yeah, my first impressions of the C Force 800 XC2 Upper is I like it. Again, it's got the premium shocks. It rides nice. A very similar suspension. The KM, but it has a rear trailing arm, so you're traveling straight up and down, and you have less scrub that way. So it handles very well, except for the twitchy power steering. I don't know if I'm a fan of that or not. I think KM may have the edge here on their tri mode. You can dial that in a little better. It would be awesome if this has it, or if this had it, then I think it would make it about perfect and very, very comparable to. Can-Am and the reason why I'm comparing CF Moto to Can-Am is because guys you can't deny that these CF Motos are pretty much copying Can-Am as far as power looks features etc but you can't complain about that Can-Ams are good machines and these come in a little bit cheaper than you can get a Can-Am and these come again fully loaded with these premium rims winch hand guards so i again i can't complain that they're kind of especially on their side by side line copying can-am because it's making for a great four-wheeler at a more budget price but from that first initial impression i like it i would buy this machine probably before i bought the comparable can-am or polaris just simply because of the price point quality of the cf motos are up a lot more than they used to be and I think they're pretty good machines. Again, if it just wasn't for this twitchy steering. So keep an eye out for the ride video for today that we're going to go on here and get some more uh, test footage of this guy in action with its owner piloting because I won't be as hard on it as the owner is because it's not my machine. But yeah.
Ever since I've had the hinkering to get back in a four wheel riding, I've been looking heavily at the Seaforce 800. And so far, I don't see anything that would keep me from buying one. So thanks for watching this quick little review video of the Seaforce 800. And until next time, God bless and keep on riding. What do you have to say for yourself? Picking on the little kid. You feel bad for the little kid. But you know, the, the underdog wasn't that far behind you though. I thought he was just gonna take off from me. Of course he was a two wheel drive and I was in four, so I, I don't know how much he spun there, but a lot. So I brought out good old big bear. Probably where Danny's spin marks are. I just got in front of that and I finally hooked. Yeah. So oh well. It's worth a shot. Anything else to add? No. Okay.